Pretty Peter, a Ugandan transgender woman living in Kenya for her safety, told AP News that some of her gay, lesbian, and transgender friends in Uganda aren't leaving their homes these days for fear of being profiled and arrested on the street. Even though Kenya has anti-gay laws also, it is the only country in the region that will offer asylum to LGBTQ people fleeing countries with harsher penalties against LGBTQ people. But getting to Kenya, even though it's just over the border, requires transportation and passports, and that can be a severe hindrance to many people. Uganda, all the way back to colonial times, has had a law criminalizing homosexuality and threatening LGBTQ plus people with incarceration. But as of last week, Uganda has made punishments even worse for homosexuality. They've created a crime called aggravated homosexuality. And God knows I've been aggravated by some homosexuals. But I wouldn't wish, I wouldn't wish them anything you know, harsh or ugly. But they've, they've created a category called aggravated homosexuality, which can be punishable by execution. Aggravated homosexuality includes an HIV-positive person having sex. Promoting homosexuality also now comes with a prison sentence. I think it's 14 years. Now, how does one promote homosexuality? Come and get it. Get your homosexuality here. Come and get it. How, how do you promote it? But the law is worded broadly enough that educating about or making moral defenses of same gender love or attraction could be called promotion and lead to severe penalties. Health agencies fear this law will make HIV prevention more difficult, and human rights groups condemn the law for obvious reasons. In other news, in response to Don't Say Gay, age requirements to see drag performances no matter the content of the performance, hateful bathroom bills and book bans, and banning drag performers from parades that exist to honor the courage of drag artists and trans people resisting unfair harassment. Many queer people and trans people are contemplating leaving Florida. And some transgender folk have even taken to crowdsourcing to raise the necessary funds to leave. Kampala may take things farther than Tallahassee, but the mindset is not so different. If Kampala frightens or angers you, then resist injustices proposed in Tallahassee. Now, sometimes people will say that uh, we shouldn't make such calls, that, that it's just too political. It isn't political to stand up for yourself. Or if it is, it's because we have been politicized. Now, I, I, I never mention political parties. I usually don't even mention people's names. But injustice is what it is. And we will call that out. And if you are uh, affected by it, of course you are going to say, I resist and oppose this. And if you are an ally, allies means that you are with the oppressed people even when it inconveniences you, even if it costs you some privilege or some prestige. If you have to choose between a person and a policy and you don't choose the person, you weren't an ally. And so, yes, we aren't being, we aren't being partisan. We are being, using our rights to stand up for ourselves. We are saying we are fully human. We are citizens. We are residents. And we deserve equity, fair treatment, equal protection, equal opportunity. And certainly, we deserve to not be demonized and have that demonization codified in laws. So if Kampala frightens you or angers you, then resist injustices wherever they occur. Uganda being worse in its punishments doesn't make less severe forms of oppressions okay. LGBTQ people everywhere deserve to live without abuse of any kind. Hear me when I beg you to write letters, sign petitions, continue to support Sunshine Cathedral, hashtag my queer church, and every single time, vote. 
Don't slag off the weed commissioner. Vote. If there's an election, vote. And may God's blessing be upon LGBTQ people all over the world. Amen.